lovely viewers welcome back to my youtube channel strings and gale Today is our second violin tutorial series which is all about how to rosin your bow plus bowing exercises. But before that, make sure that you have watched my first video tutorial so you could follow easily on each of my lessons. I will put the link of the first tutorial on the description box. Without further ado, let's get started. You might be wondering why your violin doesn't create a good quality sound while you are playing. Well, there is one reason and it might be because you didn't rosin your bow. So this is the rosin and you need this before to start playing. Therefore, rosining your bow should be done first before playing. If you don't know how to rosin your bow, don't worry because I am here to guide you. Now, get your bow and rosin with you. So the first thing that you need to do is to tighten the hair of your bow first. You tighten it with the use of the adjusting screw. So I will show you how. As you can see, there is a, a bit gap that is forming there. So that is how you tighten it. And I think that's enough. Alright, so this is my bow. So what I always do before rosening it, is I always divide it into three parts. So this is this is the middle part. This is the upper part. And this is the bottom part. So what I always do is I always start at the bottom part of the bow. So what I do is to create a down and up movement against the rosin bar to create friction. So you should make an up and down movement against the rosin bar. So you could do this at least two to three minutes. You could do it slowly or you could do it as fast as you can. you would see that there are dusts falling and that's a good thing. It means that the rosin bar is working. So I'm then rosening the bottom part. As you can see, the bottom part is whiter than the rest part of the bow. And that is the rosin. As you can see, the white dust from the rosin bar are sticking on the hair of the violin bow. And that's a good thing. And when the rosin are properly distributed on the bottom part of the bow, then you can proceed to the other part of the bow and do the same thing. I'm going to rosin the middle part, just like this. You can do it slowly or you can do it as fast as you can. So it should be your uh, right hand that is moving not not the rosin it should be your right hand so you can see my left hand is steady it's not moving and it's my right hand that is moving 
to create friction against the roots and bar. I'm done with the middle part. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing again on the upper part of the bow, just like this. So it's just repeating the same process. All right, well done, perfect. But we are not done yet. When you are done putting rosin on all of the parts of the bow, then it's time to mix up everything evenly. So what we will do is to rosin the whole part of the bow, we will be creating an up and down movement from the bottom to top and top to bottom. So just like this. See, it's all white and nice. Perfect. Wow, that's so good. I love it. <laughs> now that we are done rosining our bow, then let's proceed to the bowing exercises. So, I am going to talk about the different basic uh, kinds of time signatures. So we have 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 2-4 and 1-4. These time signatures tell us how fast or slow the music is. Let's have an example so you would understand the differences between them. Let's use the first part of the song Canon. I know you are all familiar with this. So these are the notes. So we have Fi or Fa sharp. And then we have me, or you can use the first string for the me. It's just the same. And then we have re on the second string. And then we have D or do sharp. And then we have T. And then we have La. That's La. And then T again. And then D or Do sharp. So we have. the different kinds of time signature and apply it to the first part of the song canon so i'm gonna be using a metronome so you could see the differences between the time signatures so let's start with a 4-4 time signature One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, play. That's it. That's the four four time signature. And you can repeat it as many times as you want. Now let's have the 3 4 time signature. So I'm using again the metronome, and this is how it sounds like 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, play. It's a bit 
is a bit faster than the 4-4 time signature. This is the 2-4 time signature and this is how it sounds like. One, two, one, two, one, two. signature so I'm not going to uh, use the metronome because we only have one I'm going to use half bow half part of the bow for the one four time signature one So the lower the number, the faster the music goes. So it's, uh, how do you call it in mathematics? Inversely pro proportional. <laughs> so those are the bowing exercises that I could suggest to you guys. So yeah, you can start from a very slow tempo like 4-4 four, four time signature two faster time signatures like 3-4, 2-4, and even 1-4 time signature. And you can do that every day so you can speed up your bowing skill. You can also use those time signatures while playing the do re mi fa sol do on your violin as a warm-up exercise before start learning the song you want. I hope you learned a lot from me today. If you have inquiries, you can always follow and message me on my social medias just right here. That's it for now and let's see each other on my next violin tutorial series. Stay tuned! Bye!